Jared Polin, fro knows photo.com back with another super secret project for all of you beginners out there. What is really important when you're first starting out? Learning and understanding what ISO means. ISO is in essence your film speed. When we shot film, we would have a choice between 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600. Those are the film flies. Anyway, those are the films that you would use primarily. In digital SLRs, you have the capability of selecting the ISO or the sensitivity to light. The lower the number, the less sensitive to light your camera is going to be. That means that there's a lot more light out there, so it doesn't need to be super sensitive. The higher the ISO, 3200 or above, 1600, 3200, 6400, the more sensitive to light your sensor is going to be, meaning there's not a lot of light around, so you need these pixels to be larger, your film grain to be larger, to draw in extra light. But what are the trade-offs? At higher ISOs, there's more noise. Or the grain that you see, it's kind of like film grain, but it's digital noise where you get the, those colors and, and things like that. So where would you use 100 ISO? Well, in ultra bright daylight, 100 ISO will be fine. What happens if you're shooting a concert and there's not a lot of light? You have to bump your ISO up higher. So 800, 1600. If you need faster shutter speeds, you can bump your ISO because ISO is directly connected with your shutter speed. As your ISO goes higher, your shutter speeds will tend to go higher depending on the situation you are in. So if you start at 100 ISO and your shutter speed is at 100th of a second and you double it to 200 ISO, your shutter speed will go up one stop to 200th of a second. You see how that's happening as you go up, your shutter speed's going to go up. In low light situations, you need to have more light. You need to gather more light. And this ties in with the importance of better lenses. So this is partly a rant. You know, people are like, oh, you always recommend these 2.8s and they're really expensive. I recommend them because in these low end cameras, this D3000 tops out at 1600. It goes to 3200, not very well. I want to keep it at 800 or lower. But in order to do that, I need to let more light in, 2.8, 1.8, 1.4, in order to get a better image or a fast enough shutter speed at those lower ISOs. So those kit lens they sell you, those 55 to 200s that are 5.6 all the way zoomed out. Just because you can bump your ISO to 1600 or 3200 doesn't mean you should. But you have to when you have those 5.6 lenses in order to get a fast enough shutter speed or to let enough light in to then get an image. So what I'm saying is at 5.6, if you were at 3200 ISO at 5.6, and then you had a 2.8 lens instead of that 5.6 lens, and you went from 5.6 to f4 to f2.8, that's two stops. So in essence, you can get the same shutter speed that you were gonna have at 3200, now you go back two stops, 1600 and 800. Now not only are you letting in better, you're letting in more light at lower ISOs, you're gonna have sharper and better quality images. One, because the lens is, the lens is better, because it's a 2.8 and they usually have better glass, and two, your ISO was dropped lower. That's why I preach the importance of better glass, because it helps you drop that ISO in these lower end cameras to give you better quality images. So that is the basics to ISO. Jared Polin, fro knows photo.com. My Smurf.